Welcome back and welcome to Women and Globalization. This will be hosted by Dr. Satish Misra of the Capital Forum. Today, Dr. Misra's guest is Ms. Rana J. Sheikh. She is Governor's Commissioner, Commission on South Asian American Affairs, where? In the state of Maryland. Let's have a look. Good morning. Welcome to this segment of Women and Globalization of Women's Worldview. We are very fortunate to have with us today Ms. Rana Sheikh. Thank you. And a little bit of intro, and then she is commissioner in governor's uh, appointed position on South Asian American Affairs, State of Maryland. And uh, Rana, I see uh, that you have been very, very progressive. It's not only commissioner, you are also associated with the bank. I am. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what is your association with both sure. bank as well as the uh, state of Maryland? Absolutely. Um, thank you again for yeah. having me. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak well, with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I guess a little bit uh, of background on myself. Um, I'm actually currently a commercial banker with Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Uh -huh. um, I have uh, been in this particular role for six years. Uh -huh. um, I have been in the finance industry for about 15 years. Wow. So you take care of everybody's finances. <laughs> you, yeah. yeah. Um, I have pretty much grown up in the industry. Um, so I, that is most of my, my background professionally. Uh, a few you are with, with this banking industry, yes. right? Yes. And that's your educational background also? I, the funny thing is my major in school had nothing to do with finance. Oh boy. Uh, so where <laughs> did you pick it up from? Uh, well, I guess maybe it's the, the, the desi in me that the, <laughs> the numbers come easily. So desi ne paisa management sikha diya aapko? Aisa hi kuch samaj le. Chalo haan. So I guess a few years ago um, I, I joined Bank of America and I had the opportunity to uh, work as a commercial banker there. Through my efforts of engaging the community and uh, doing a lot of business development, I had the chance to participate in a business conference for the state of Maryland, uh -huh. and that was in 2012. Uh -huh. um, I was invited to be uh, on the planning committee and helping put together the actual conference. Wow, um, that's a big responsibility. It was actually a conference that was quite large, and um, when I got involved with them, I wasn't really sure what I was getting involved with. Uh -huh. Uh, I was also asked to be a panelist as well, and as a panelist, I was going to speak about uh, various financing programs that were available to Asian American business owners. Mm -hmm. And through my efforts uh, within this conference, I in inter interacted with a lot of the state officials, and I was invited to uh, apply for a role as a commissioner for the mm -hmm. Governor's Commission on South Asian so American Affairs. So this opportunity of getting involved with a conference, organizing the conference, opened up various other possibilities. Yes. Is that what you are saying? Yes. So look here, that opportunity avail, if it is available to you, make sure that you take that opportunity and make the most, most out of that opportunity. That's right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now a little bit about your background. Where are you from originally? Your parents are from? Sure. Yeah. Um, so my parents are originally, or our families are from Kashmir. Um, we've been, I'm actually born and raised here in the U.S. Where, where in? Um, I'm sorry? Well, what city? Oh, what, um, here in the United States? Yeah, in the United States. Uh, we actually li reside in Maryland mm -hmm. um, and have been there, I think, since the late 80s. Oh, uh, boy, So yeah. the metropolitan region has been home, I guess, for most of my, my life. Oh, <laughs> I see. You enjoy living here? I do. It's uh, a very dynamic area to, to live in, mm -hmm. uh, very cosmopolitan. Uh, there is always something to engage you. Uh, That's right. I, I really enjoyed it. I said, it's also a very beautiful city. It is. You see all kind of season, mm -hmm. but that's besides the point. The point here is you came from Kashmir, right? Yes. Your parents, not you. Yeah. And this is your home. Yes. That's very good. That and you came from Kashmir when it was India was undivided. Right. So that's beautiful. Have you ever been back to? India? Um, Pakistan? So I have, but it's been about 11 years since I visited. And what do you remember about your visit 11 years ago? So we still have some family um, that's uh, in the region uh, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to go back. I enjoy the culture and like most girls, the clothes and the music and the jewelry, yeah. it's always fun to, <laughs> to partake in. That, that's really good. India is very, very good in Fashion, jewelry, sure, and culture, of course, food. I love all that. Now, 
coming back to this commissioner's appointment, sure. you s that opportunity you availed, that opened up possibilities, then what happened? Uh, so a little bit about what the actual commission does, so you have a little background on that. Uh, the commission actually does a lot of, uh, promotes a lot of activities within the South Asian community um, to encourage and raise concerns at the state level regarding cultural, social, and business interests. And really we are representatives of the community at the state level. And then we also help um, the, the state officials disseminate information within the community that's relative to, to our community. So you act as, a, as an ambassador to the community. Sure, I guess that's a way to put it. That's a way to, and you find out what is happening in the community. If I have a concern as a community member, mm -hmm. I just communicate that to you or anybody out of viewers. Sure. They can communicate that concern to you and you will make sure that that is communicated to proper authorities within the state of Maryland. Sure. In the governor's office. Mm -hmm. So if I have, if I'm organizing an event, for example, cultural event, and if I invite you and ask you to help me out, can you do that? Absolutely. And what kind of um, involvement your office would like to get into? Uh, well, that actually depends on the event and what role you're asking for the commissioners to, to take in that particular event. Uh -huh. um, but when it comes to cu cultural events or business events, uh, the commissioners are actively involved in the community and promoting those events for various organizations, various individuals, because that is a, a part of our role. Yeah. So is the ro role is limited to cultural event or some beyond cultural event. Oh no, it definitely beyond cultural events. So yeah. uh, within our commission we have uh, various subcommittees and subcommittees focus on various issues that are of uh -huh. concern to the community. Community development has a lot of the cultural component, a lot yeah. of the social component. There is an economic uh, subcommittee which focuses on business interests within the state of Maryland for the South Asian community. Uh -huh. There's also uh, a legislative committee where we get to influence uh, various laws and policies that go into effect. Uh -huh. um, and then we have a health and education component as well because those are issues that are also very important uh -huh. to the South Asian community. What, what about if I feel that I'm being discriminated at sure. some place or at uh, office level or some, somewhere, can you help in that also? We can help facilitate in putting you in touch with the proper individuals to help you. So you work concern. as a mediator or a communicator or what kind of work can you provide? Um, it wouldn't necessarily be a mediator role because that is not, I can speak that's to my. That's not a job. Yeah, that's yeah. That, and it's also not my credentials. <laughs> that's right, but yeah. we could put you in touch with the proper um, arm of the state that may be able to help those address those issues yeah. that may have arose. And sometimes I get uh, messages from like battered women. Okay. And if they are battered, if they feel that they are being uh, unnecessarily penalized for things that they have not done, okay. or uh, they are being kicked out by the society, especially family members, mm -hmm. do you help them out too? Sure. Um, that is actually a component um, that the community development subcommittee deals with as mm -hmm. well. Um, I personally am, am very uh, close to that cause. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important for um, women to have a support system, particularly South Asian women. Mm -hmm. uh, the culture sometimes influences how we deal with various situations, and I think it's important to That's have a That's a very network. important component, culture influences. Yeah. Like uh, the I, culture I come from, mm -hmm. family values are very, very important. Sure. And we want those to be preserved right. in next generation, generation. But over here, individual is very important instead of family values. So I don't know where to find a balance. Sometimes I get, uh, you know, uh, I keep thinking about it, that finding a balance between individual freedom versus family values. Sure. So what do you think about it? Uh, so I think that's an interesting question. Uh, as I said, I was born and raised here in the U.S. My family is, is obviously from um, the subcontinent. And the, the, I guess the idea or the notion of family unit versus independent individual uh, I think is one that you, you come across here in the U.S. quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But I am very close to my family. Uh, I am, uh, my siblings are... That's the bottom line. Yes. I, like as yeah. you <laughs> are close-knit sure. and care about each other. Absolutely. That's what I think part of any culture, whether Eastern culture or Western culture, Hindu culture, Muslim culture, mm -hmm. that's the close thing, that feeling about it. And now coming back to globalization, has it impacted your personal life? 
Yes. Especially related <laughs> to women. Uh, sure. Um, I guess on a, on a larger scale, uh, globalization is everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the simplest things I think to take note is most of the products that we use here in the United States today are not being manufactured here, uh, as well as services um, that are being rendered abroad as well. And just as an example, if you were to call a, um, a helpline, for instance, you're most likely going to get somebody who is sitting in another country. So globalization is everywhere. In regards to women, it is something that is definitely affecting women today, and I think in a positive manner. And one of the things that I would talk about from my personal experience is that um, in the past, I think uh, gender roles were um, separated. And when it came to the professional world, I think it was more along the lines of, if you're a female, you weren't going to get paid the same amount of yeah, money that, as a that, male right. that, yeah. in the same role. Uh, I don't see that happening as much here in the United States as it once was. I think we're moving in the right direction. If you have the skills... Globally. Yes. We are moving in the right direction globally. So Absolutely. globalization has opened up opportunities for women to... Equal be involved in globalized world. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, one more question: What sure. motivated to get involved in political process? What you already told me, but sure. uh, there had to be inborn desire to make a contribution or to do something for the community. What happened? Uh, so, I'm involved with the community from a business perspective because that is my career path, uh -huh. and I also just being a um, South Asian looking around me, I think it's important for us to take um, a role up in local communities, meaning the communities as a whole, as well as local government. And it was an interest of mine when I was in school. I was able to pursue it, and um, I'm kind of back in something yeah. I enjoy. That's really good. That's really great. So it was in bond desire sure. for you to get involved in political process, and that's very important for young women. Sure. So we are getting almost close to our time allotted. So, you have any last minute uh, message, especially to young women? Sure. Um, I guess as a general rule, I would say one thing. Uh, I think the South Asian community needs to do a better job to get more involved with their local communities uh -huh. and local governments. And when it comes to women, um, I think you need to identify what it is that you want to do, what your passion or your interest is, and pursue that. Uh, I think it's important to devise a plan on how you're going to execute and actually meet your goals. Uh, I think it's also great to find a mentor, whether it's male or female, to help guide you and give you advice to mm -hmm. achieve what you're looking to achieve. Lastly, don't be afraid to hear no. You're not always going to hear yes, but if you hear no once, you'll be ready for a yes tomorrow. Wow, that's really good. So you're telling our audience that keep focused, yes. very important. Mm -hmm. Still interact, be part of the community, sure. be part of the uh, society, mm -hmm. be part of the family. Yes. And respect everyone, and but keep your individual identity. Absolutely. Always, you know, always you do whatever you think is best for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you. your coming here.